This video is brought to you by Sailrite. Visit Sailrite.com for all your project supplies, tools, and instructions. All right, we're going to work on installing the number nine ring and eyelet. Um, we do have uh, brass ring and eyelets, which is the traditional way of, uh, of installing one of these using a brass ring. Um, for applications where we want to do something that's a little bit, uh, say, a little bit heavier, or you just want to use the stainless ring, you could use stainless ring and the, or the brass ring. They're both the same size. But we're going to use the brass ring in this case. <clears throat> now, the first case we want to draw on the inside, we want to set a ring where we want it. In this case, I have it right where I want it. And this is simulating the tack corner of a sail. But we want to draw the inner circle. The inner circle needs to be smaller than the inside diameter of the ring. So we do want to angle our pencil to point toward the outside of the ring so we get a hole or a circle that's a little bit larger than the inside diameter. And then when I'm doing that, I also want to put one on the outside. Now this one can be basically straight up and down, but it, it's not critical because we're going to be, it's just basically our sew line. <clears throat> this is our sew to line and where I'm going to be putting the holes for hand sewing the ring in place. And this is kind of there, so we have two circles, and again, this one doesn't have to be perfect. Um, you just need enough space. You can see roughly it should leave about a quarter inch away from the inner circle where we will be cutting this inner circle out. Okay. And to cut it out, you can use various hole cutters. We do have our largest is a one inch hole cutter. Ooh, that's nice. <laughs> and we just go around the outer edge because the hole cutter isn't exactly the size of the... And if you don't get it all, you can just take another little bite. Now, if you're like a little bit 16th of an inch, a little bit too big, um, like over here, there's a little spot, that's not super critical. Because again, we just have to have some fabric between here and our stitching line. Now, what I like to do with the heavy stuff, if you're trying to get a palm and push this needle through all this material, um, that's gonna be a whole lot of work and quite frankly, somewhat dangerous because it's very hard to put that much pressure on a needle and not slip or make a mistake. So what I like to do is that once I get this set and I already have that, I just go around here and use my scratch all. These are handy for this stuff. And I just go around oops, and put holes in it. Basically with this, you're going roughly, you know, a 16th to an eighth of an inch apart. I mean, it sounds like a lot, but you'll see it almost looks like it's one continuous series of holes with not much gap, but there actually is a fair amount of fabric in between that. And you'll see when we stitch it that pretty much the ring will be covered with twine, which is what you would expect. And 
Yeah. Oh, we cut about eight to nine foot of twine, and that's enough. And we just want to feed it through and get to the center. If I can stop stepping on it, which is. We just simply knot the center of it, or knot the ends, excuse me. And you get your palm on for this. Palms don't necessarily fit like snug, perfect to your hand, like you might say a, a nice pair of gloves but they should be functional, shouldn't hurt your hand. Um, I like to take the needle and basically when I'm sewing, I can do like this and get it in here. Basically, I'm gonna just get this going. And again, if it gets too hard to pull through, we can always use plier, pliers to pull it. So then we put a ring in place and this just goes through the top. We leave the tail along here and as we stitch, we'll be stitching this down. So the more pressure it puts on, the tighter that will get and it will hold there itself without tying any kind of loops. So then in, this can move around a little bit. It's not a big deal at this point. <coughs> so next hole. And again, we want to catch these extra strands. So we want to make sure that's going to be caught there. And it is. Then we start pulling tight. Just feed it back through. Again, we want this out. Oops, see that's where you can do if you miss, like I just had it right here, one slip. So you wanna be careful with that. And you just keep going around and each time you pull it tight and once you get going uh, <coughs> it'll start to stay more once we get probably around a quarter of the way the ring will pretty much stay in place so as you pull tight it won't uh, seem like it's moving all over like it is now but, and that's perfectly normal. So sometimes when it sticks using a pair of pliers just makes things a lot faster. Okay, we're almost getting to the point of being done. Make sure you pull tight after every penetration you make. And loop you make around the ring. Just
That was a little harder because I'm going through the original hole. So I just made a complete circle. Now to finish, I'm going to just go right through several layers or several wraps. and pull the twine tight. And it is wax, so you can cut it a little long. And this can be, if you wanted to, this could be melted. We're gonna put a eyelet on it, but you could, if you're careful with a hot knife, just get a little bit close with heat and it will melt together. But we don't need to, the eyelet's gonna take care of that. We already got it tied. The twine, the wax will hold the twine and keep it from slipping. And now we just have to set our eyelet. And for that, we've got our number nine eyelet die and our eyelet. And again, on this, oops, mallet. I'm trying to make sure. Now this will just go on like that. You can see it fit on. It should go on where the, the initial flare is on the side where the bottom side of the ring, where you can't see the ring. So we wanna put that on that side. Then we're gonna come down and get it, make sure it's set on the eye or the die correctly. And then we just go in. And now here's where you wanna be on something hard. Now, for filming, I'm on the corner of a table leg. Um, if you are at home, you may want to go on a concrete floor. Just make sure you have something clean. If you don't want to get your new sail all dirty. But now these set, you know, fairly hard because it's a, a fairly solid piece of brass. So it's going to take several mallets or several mallet strikes, probably in the area nine or ten, to set that. And you can see our flare started. And we can keep going with that. And then once it gets to this point, you see it, it's not completely set yet. You can still see some space. I like to flip the sail over and just go on the other side with a couple hits from the back side. Hmm. So it's still spinning a little bit. It's gonna, it's gonna rotate some, but I want this to flare a little bit more and get a little bit tighter against the twine. If you go too far, you can risk actually setting it to the point where you're rolling it over and it rolls the metal down and actually cuts the twine. So we want to get just a little bit more than this. And here you can see that it's pretty snug. And you can still move this inside eye a little bit. And I can see where I can tighten that a little bit more. And just look at it. I mean, if it's, if it's wiggling too much and there's some gap, we can set it more. Um, this isn't a critical part. What this eyelet is doing is protecting the twine from getting split by shackles or uh, any lines running through it. And so you want the eyelet there. It's not providing the major strength. That's all the hand stitching in the ring that's doing that. So that's about set, and it will still spin some, like I said, um, as it's used. Um, they may change a little bit in shape just from a shackle pulling on it long enough, just like if you've ever seen headboards, even aluminum headboards will, will 
wear a little bit on the inside, but that's what it's there for, to protect that. If it ever did wear out, it could be cut out and replaced. Um, but we're hoping that that probably won't happen in the lifetime of your sale. So you should never have to do that. Okay. That's it. And finally, we're going to use the battery-operated thread burner to seal the raw ends of our wax twine, giving our project a beautiful finished look.